American P-47, Thunderbolt, fresh from the hands of the aviation workers who built them. They're headed now for a secret port of embarkation, a secret jumping off place for the mountain battle of Germany. They'll cross the ocean by convoy, but they'll reach our air bases on Britain in the same perfect state in which they left the final testing line at home. Dismantled, greased, weatherproof, crated, yes, by hand, skilled and trained. The precious man hours sweated into these flying weapons will be perfectly guarded. they arrive without a scratch, with nothing lost. British hands take up where American hands left off, fitting back the part, grooming our thunderbolts for their true elements the sky over burning Germany. Ready for its pre-battle test, the P-47 gasses up on American super octane, fuel for lightnings and thunderbolts and other sky rippers. can produce against the best we can produce. This is one of our advanced supply depots on the mud-soaked Italian boot. Word has just come through from a group of our infantry doughboys that they've been out of food for 24 hours. They are in combat on the top of one of the surrounding hills. It's a hill riddled with American steel, yes, and stained with American blood. Because of the vast number of shells we had to pour into it before we could rout the Nazis out, the boys have christened it Two Million Dollar Hill. That's an understatement. Brutal weather, mud, Narrow foot trails rule out all machine power. To reach them, we have to return to mule power and the strength of a man's back. This is the slogging drudgery of war. This is a parade without flags or music. A group of hungry doughboys want food. There are no corner drugstores to go to on Two Million Dollar Hill. No stepping out to a friendly lunch wagon where Mike sets out the Java and sizzling Franks. On this hill, if you step out, you meet a plate full of sizzling Nazi bullets. This isn't the usual three square. Right now, though, it hits the spot. They'll have that real meal later, back home with the crowd, when all this is over. And we'll get it over. The whole 130 million of us. For this doughboy, there will be no old crowd to meet again. He won't be hungry anymore.
morning, in the time you spent brushing your teeth, planes of the Air Transport Command were busy flying a distance of 5,000 miles. Right now, in the time you spend looking at this issue, your air transport planes are flying a distance equal to twice around the world. And between this minute and this same time tomorrow, they will have carried their cargoes 120 more times around the world. Here's one for the books about your ally, China. The pay of a private in the Chinese army is the equivalent of 52 cents a month. He has been fighting the Japanese for six and one half years. In these six and one half years, the Chinese soldier has earned $40.56 and the respect of the entire civilized world. This was our Navy when we entered the war. 1,076 ships, combat and non-combat. Many of these ships have since been sunk. The Pacific, the Atlantic, the Mediterranean. Question, how many ships do we have today? Answer, 14 times as many as we had when we started, thanks to the men and women working in United States shipyards. General Marshall inspects the Army's Hawaiian Jungle Training Center. Some of these doughboys are training to replace the men who fought and died on New Britain, on Tarawa, on the Gilbert, the Marshall. Others will make up whole divisions to open up new fronts encircling Japan. Under simulated battle conditions, thousands of men learning every cunning, every trick to take vengeance on the treacherous Japs, to make them pay in blood for the lives of the Americans they tortured and murdered. Very soon, these very men will be hitting the beaches and jungles of Jap-held territory, and other men will take their places here. A stream of men, but just as important, a stream of equipment must go with these men to replace the staggering mountains of equipment lost, burned, and destroyed in combat. 